and welcome to Spit to the Beat Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey, a.k.a. Beat Unstoppable Per You, and we are live in the studio once again. Got a very special guest in the studio building with me, but before I bring him on, you know how I do. I kick that intro. And don't forget, you can catch all my latest clips on Facebook at Stacy B Unstoppable Per Year or Stacy Spit to the Beat Per Year. Don't forget to go check out the full video on YouTube at Spit to the Beat. Also, subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell. I really do appreciate it. And now, without further ado, in the building with me. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> DJ. You dropping the hair on us, man, in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, What's sir. What's going on, my friend? How you doing, bro? We back at it again. We back at it again. Let's yeah. get it done. Let's get it done. For sure, for sure. Tell my audience a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, I've been DJing now uh, full time for about 17, 18 years, mm -hmm. give or take. Uh, but I've been around music all my life. I've been playing drums since I was three years old. Been, you know, grew up around music. Every, uh, Music on both sides of my family. Uh, actually, my my father, if you are familiar with the movie The Blues Brothers, and if you're familiar with yes, uh, yeah. Isaac Hayes, yeah. Booker T and the MGs, Stax Music, uh, my second cousin is Willie Hall. Right. Uh, and his son is Gangsta Pat, was one of the first gangster rappers here in the, uh, in the South. Really was one of the ones that really went big from this area first. So mm -hmm. just music been around me all my life, you know. So uh, me and my dad had a quartet group back in the day. Of course, every, everybody who was affiliated with church started, affili affiliated with music started in church, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, bro, it's like music is just engulfed around me. So I had I had no way to, to dodge it. And, and, no, I have noticed everything uh, lately with all my guests. Everyone has a, a connection to Stax. Oh yeah, Stax, Stax, Stax was is Stax is and always will be big stuff. Yeah, uh, irregardless of you know how I fail and what happened, uh, it was Stax. I think Stax was like giving, I would say Motown a run for their money. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know Detroit did their thing, Barry Gordy did their thing, but Stax was doing some some major stuff. I mean Isaac Hayes and those guys. Yeah, you know Johnny Taylor, the Staple Singers. Uh, Rance Allen. I mean, you you know they had a they had a big catalog going on. Al Green was on Stacks at one time, you know. So Stacks is Stacks is still big stuff, you know. I you know they of course they did some different things and kind of you know uh, translated with another another label. So it ain't mm -hmm. just really the same no more. But it's big stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of rich his history with uh, Stacks Museum, mm -hmm. Stacks Records, and stuff like now Stacks Museum where you can go and right. see the history of it. Right, and stuff right. Like with Isaac Hayes and the the big car, and all that. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. definitely get the whole feel of it. Yeah. So let's talk about you, man. Okay. How you come with the DJ One Love? Uh, well, back in the day, uh, uh -huh. there used to be a thing, you know. When you, I know New York was saying it one while for a whole life, like when you say, "What's up, man?" Like One Love, One Love. So my name Lavelle. Okay. And uh, so you know, I used to kind of say it sometimes, you know, just you know, "What's up, man?" One Love, you know, what I'm saying. So I was like, okay, when I got ready to start to get a DJ name, I, I ain't really know what I wanted to do with the time. And so what's some of the names you came up with? One of the ones I had, <laughs> I was gonna go with because I used to call myself infrared when I called okay. myself one time I called myself gonna try to rap. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we test the water. <laughs> everybody, everybody goes, gonna try to be a rapper at one time. Right. So I said, I said, I'm gonna try to go with DV, DJ infrared. They're like they don't sound too professional. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of shot at that one like some years ago. Uh, you know, maybe you know, just thought about that name again. And then I just thought about just going with my, my regular name, of course, but I like, no, nah, I need something to type it kind of identify, you know, the type of person I am. And I believe I show love to everybody. Yeah. You know, so one love is everybody love one. You know what uh -huh. I mean? So that's how I came up with DJ One Love. Oh, so nobody didn't stick you, you came with up, came up with yourself. Yeah, I okay. came up with myself. And it no, just it stuck with me. No, a lot of people like the labels and the my you need call yourself DJ this or nah, DJ that. You be like, okay. No, nah, I mean for the most part. Like people don't even call me by my name, Holly, no more. It's, it's, it was up, one love, and then you add the entertainment to it. Yeah, okay. Cause yeah. I, one time I actually thought about dropping DJ. Cause mm. I mean, I think I'm one of those DJs that do more than just DJ and play music. I'm an entertainer. I'm an interactive guy. I like to try to get involved. I get paid to party. 
and and this goes right into my next qu uh, question: your unique style, right? Uh, being a DJ, you, you just said you're not just a DJ, but you you're an entertainer, right? Right. So, what's what would you would you how you do your entertainment as far as besides just you know doing a record? Well, I try to, I try to make sure I work on my mic skills. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm a comedian in my former days. Ain't no, ain't no <laughs> man of many skills. <laughs> yeah, ain't no telling what I, I now let's say on the mic. You know, I do yeah. it very tasteful or whatever. But yeah, yeah, a lot of folks say I need to be a comedian. But you know, you can, so you get a little, a little bit of both. So and then I like to get out there, and engage with the, uh, with the, with the crowd and dance. Mm -hmm. And if I know the line dance, try to help them learn it. You know, I, you know, if, if it's children at the event, I really target the children because you know children are dear to us. So uh, just make sure I'm engaged and, and you know. And make sure that I'm a part of that whole production, and I just yeah. stand behind that table. I believe this that table, or whatever you sit up behind, is a is a barrier. Right. And, and, right. And, and once you come from behind, and the people are like they, they become more personable to you, and, mm. you know, and, and, it, and it really becomes like you know, why wow, he feel like family. He just like he's not just working for us or trying to just get some money. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So and you make that connection with him, right, you know, and, right. and, and of course it leads to other jobs because because right. people are. You know, we always watching, right? And looking, and it's like, man, I think I hire him for my party, right? When you go and read my wedding and stuff like that, yeah. When you go and read my reviews, uh, I got reviews on Google and Wedding Wire, um, uh, Facebook. Probably sixty percent of my reviews gonna all say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Where like this, you no, know, this guy here, man, is you know he's lovable, he's approachable, or, you know he felt like family. It's gonna, it's gonna always be that that family connection type thing. So it's like you know, yeah. Still, yeah, man, yeah. that is awesome. Mm -hmm. I know a couple other DJs. They uh, they entertain too. They come away behind it, right? That they, they set up and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. really get involved with the crowd and stuff, mm -hmm. and help and make them have a great, you know, uh, a great time. Have a great time. Right. If you're having a good yeah. time, you know, they kind of make them have a good time. It's, yeah, you know, it's we're we're connecting spirits, connecting mm -hmm. energies. You know what I'm saying? So if everybody in the room having a good time, you know, chances is everybody else will too. So. Cool. Yeah. So, like, when you're set up, doing your setup, what type of software you use, and uh, do you formulate your music around what the guests request? Uh, well, I try to make sure that I make sure that I do my due diligence as mm -hmm. far as keeping all my music in order because I have a, 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 a I use a record, record pool, DJ record pool, where I download my music from. Okay. Uh, so um, when the when the people request music, I want to try to make sure I have that music that music readily available. As much as I possibly can, I try to make sure that, you know, we ain't no jukeboxes, you know what I'm saying, as far as us being DJs, we ain't going to never have it all. Mm -hmm. But I just try to make sure that, you know, I have what they want for their particular day. Now, when it comes to weddings, you know, weddings, they're going to give you the music for their ceremony, their reception. Then they're going to give you some some requests as far as what they want to hear and for they, even what they don't want to hear. Right. And uh, whether they want it explicit or clean and stuff like this. So weddings is basically when you're going to get the book of your request. OK. Yeah. I know wedding season, like we talked early, wedding season, I'm, well, it's really year round. But the, the bulk of and the heart of it mm -hmm. is, you know, May, June, July and August and stuff like everybody. It really, get, it really has transitioned. It has it, it transitioned more to like, um, I would say the end of September, mid-September, uh -huh. October. And then November, you have some trickling. You still gonna have some May, June, and July, but it's like a lot of folks are avoiding those months because it's no, it'd be so hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have you, one every once in a while in, there, in those months. Do you ever go to any of the uh, weddings or uh, uh, shows or anything like that? Not Maybe really. Setups. Not really, because a, a lot of times it's just not profitable because you're just sitting there on your time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing against what those those individuals do. They have. Did you ever do it though? I went. I went to some. I DJ. I DJed uh, one of them. Uh, this guy here uh, locally out of Memphis. I DJ one for him because okay. I was at the that venue hosted it uh, that I I was working for working with at the time a lot, and uh, he I just so happened to be the DJ for that day, and so I had a they had an early event, so I did that event as well. So that's probably like the the biggest thing. Then I think he had one other one. I kind of like put my face in there to see what was going on, but a lot of time it's just not it's not productive to me because I mean you just you're gonna have brides to come and see they kind of fishing to see you know if you're gonna get them a deal and stuff like this. So it's and then Memphis don't have no real big ones anyway like that no way. So yeah, I remember just back in the day it was like David Bridles used to put them on. Yeah, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Look, hey, hold tight. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk a little bit more about you being a full-time DJ. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay.
Hey, this is Stacy, aka Beat Unstoppable Per You with Spit to the Beat Podcast. Would you like to be my guest if you're a singer, songwriter, musician, producer, or promoter? Give me a call at 901-341-6777 or email me at my guest at spit to the beat.com. And we're back to Spit to the Beat podcast. I'm your host, Stacey, a.k.a. Be Unstoppable Perrier, and I am joined, and I'm graced in my studio with no other than DJ One Love Entertainment, baby, <laughs> in the house with me. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so we was talking about, we left off on talk about being a full-time DJ. I know a lot of people that DJ, you know, they it's a hobby. Mm-hmm. Some take it personal. Mm-hmm. Some as a part-time gig or whatever and pick mm-hmm. up stuff like that. How did, when did you become a full time DJ? That happened around uh, two thousand. Had to be around two thousand. Was it twenty three? It's been a long time. So, uh-huh. uh huh. Uh, had to be around two thousand seven, two thousand eight, somewhere around in there. Wow. And because um, normally, before now, I'm always working a corporate job, management, customer service. Yeah. I don't have a, a actual a degree. Yeah. Uh, never d- didn't go back to school. Uh, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother podcast. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, I was always kind of messing around with it, but I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that when I got into it, I wanted to make sure that I had my business model together. I want the DJing is, you know, it'll come, it'll come second nature. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure I had a, a, a good brand, a good business model. I wanted to make sure I had my name together, business cards, branding as far as like, you know, logo, that type of thing. Exactly. And uh, so I, I, I did it under the radar for about two years before I really just put myself out there. And, uh, you know, of course, I, you know, how much you gonna charge a DJ? I DJ it for free, y'all. Whatever mm-hmm. can it be, you know, just to get myself in the market. And, uh, so like I said, I worked in corporate America. I was management for a long time. The last job that I worked, I got robbed at gunpoint. And uh I was like, something else gonna have to change. And I did a wedding like that within that within that same weekend that happened. And I met a young lady that was a wedding planner at a wedding, and she booked me for all her weddings. So she like she didn't want nobody else. So oh, I still, so you work with, she was like an event planner or something? Yeah, event planner. So okay. I still work with her to this day. We've been working together 10 years. Oh wow. That's yeah. So she's a she's a part of my full full time, you know, production. So we do like a a, a a a package deal where you get the DJ, the photographer, the videographer, and some other things she's doing there at a discounted price whenever okay. you book through her. So that definitely keep you busy mm-hmm. along with everything else you got going on outside of other parties right. and stuff like that. Right. So what were some of your memorable challenges? Did something that you ran, some crazy event maybe you did or something, anything? Uh, I think I can give one. By me being an interactive DJ, <laughs> okay. I was doing a family reunion over in West Memphis, Arkansas. Uh-huh. Still DJ with for that family as we speak. Uh, and I was out there on the dance floor uh, doing a line dance. Came around the DJ table, and we use ex- external D, uh, hard drives. Right. Came around the table, and when I hit the, when I uh, hit, I, I accidentally bumped the table. When I bumped the table, my hard drive slid and hit the concrete. Ooh. So we keep enjoying of our music on our external hard drive. Yeah. I had an event to do in a couple more hours after I got through with that one, and the hard drive would not come on. So luckily, thank God. A friend of mine that DJs, he was DJing like maybe 10 minutes away from where I'm a, I was going to be DJing it for my second event. Uh-huh. And he, he gave me a thumb drive with a little music on there just to get me going. Mm-hmm. And I would literally down, download music on the fly as I was doing an event for, it was actually for a, uh, a corporate corporate event party for some apartments or something that I was doing at the time. So that goes into my next question. How knowledgeable you need to be about your music? Say, for instance, like when that had happened. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I think everybody used the flash drive or, or stuff mm-hmm. like that, put all their music on there and stuff. At that time, was you using a flash drive? Or yeah, I mean, was, yeah, stern, a stern of hard drive. drive. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, and that's what happened. I, I knocked it down. So, uh-huh. like, technology has advanced so far from 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 the analysis. Now they got the SSD drive, so it don't okay. have that needle in there. You can drop it in, and nothing happened. Okay. And they, you know, they waterproof and everything. But you know, back then, it just, you know, if you drop it. Yeah. You know, unless you had some kind of, you know, the, something over that they make, but I just didn't have nothing on it. Just, you know, we don't take, we don't, we don't have losses. We we take lessons, you know what I mean? Right. So those were those lessons that I learned. And then I always, now I keep me two or three hard drives with me bagged up. 
I like what you just said. Say that again. Say we don't take losses. We have lessons. That's what I, I love that. Love that. Love that. Did you come in the, the vinyl area? No, I didn't. I didn't come in on the vinyl area. I came in on the uh, with the computer and the uh, the controller. So okay, yeah. I thought I mean, you scratching. I mean, you can still scratch on the on the on the what's the names? On, yeah. on the controllers, you can still yeah. scratch on them. But I didn't. I didn't come in on the vinyl area. To this day, I I really hadn't really just messed around with it because you know. By me coming into it so late in the game, I'd be almost fifty in a couple of years. Yeah, you know, you carrying them them crates and you know, not them. <laughs> I mean, the technology has changed. You don't have to have the actual records. They got phasers and all that type of thing. Yeah, but uh, I like to have my stuff small and compact. So the control I got is you know nice, small, compact, still kick out good power. So trying to have all them them, them big old crates Crazy. and all this stuff. Yeah. Nah, I wouldn't. Uh -uh. I remember, yeah, back in the day, the DJs hauling in all that equipment. Speakers yeah. already big enough. That you hauling in the crates and stuff like that. So how has technology made it more convenient for you, more and then being a DJ to be more successful? Uh, of course, like I said, you know the external hard drives. You know, uh, you know, some people have their preferences to what you know computer they use. You know, whether it's PC or Mac. Mm -hmm. I'm a PC guy. Uh, I normally use gaming computers, which is like the essential match with like a Mac MacBook or whatever the case may be, and. Uh, also, the streaming world now has made it uh, somewhat better uh, to where, like, if you don't have any, any music that's on your external hard drive, yeah. they got, uh, like, it's one particular uh, platform I use called BeatSource. Okay. It's like a streaming platform for DJs. And so they have playlists already on their made or whatever. So as long as you got internet access, you can just log in into it and, you know, find those songs. So uh, technology has, has advanced, like, man, so far advanced than from what I, when I started. Okay, okay, cool. Hey, hold tight one more time. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to come back and talk about uh, your sets and how you deal with your crowd as far as they request. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Stacy, a.k.a. Be Unstoppable Per You. Thank you for listening to our show, Spit to the Beat Podcast. If you would like to be a sponsor, visit our website at www.spittothebeat.com and click the support tab and leave a donation. We really would appreciate it. Thank you again for listening. Also, catch every episode Thursday morning at 8 a.m. And we're back, baby, in the studio of Spit to the Beat Podcast with my guest, DJ one love entertainment. What it do, bro? You got it, man. Everything good, man. I'm enjoying this this conversation. Yeah, you making me you making me think. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. Look, let's, we talked about uh talking about requests, right? When your artists uh want a special song or this and that, how how's your interaction with them as far as making that happen? Well, a lot of a lot of DJs. Believe it or not, don't like taking requests. Wow, for real. They even got an app they call it's called DJ No Request. Hold up. So if I walk up to the DJ and I in my mind, I'm you know, I'm just like anybody else will ask for a request. Mm -hmm. Special song. Can you play this for mm -hmm. that? They get a little offended about that. They get upset. Uh either they want some money for the request. Okay. But that's your job. I don't I don't agree with that. Because my even, thing is even with the money, I can't understand. Okay, I Till ten or twenty dollars, or whatever. I don't agree with the money. Wow! Because my thing is, I've I've literally have taken taken requests to where I didn't know anything about that song, mm -hmm. where it, I was now able to add that into, you know, my database of music. To where if I didn't, if if they didn't give me that request, chances are I probably would have found out late, about it later on. You know, then just like for an example, uh, during COVID, I was still doing weddings. But you couldn't interact, you know, to be on a dance floor. So, in order to take requests, we I made a QR code to put on the tables. Yeah, and for those individuals to to scan their QR code, send their request to me, and I played their song. When they heard their song, it was like a divine connection. Right, so it's the right. same scenario with when you just take it in a regular setting before COVID. That those requests they are memorable. Yeah, because you know, depending especially depending on the event that you're at, you know. They either either their song was connected to their family member, uh, you know, it was a song, you know, that 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 uh that that sorority or fraternity or something connected to it or whatever. So I don't necessarily agree with it. Now, some of it on the on the other side of it, just to be cool, just to be very transparent about it, 
sometimes it can real be to be to be nerve wracking depending on what it is because you know, especially with this new music that's out yeah. now, you know, with the trap and ratchet music, as I call it. Exactly. Uh, sometimes they can get it, they can get a little annoying. It'd be hard to find it sometimes too. Yes. Yeah. And then in some, in some scenarios or some events and atmospheres, you can't play the you know the, that dirty music. You know, you can, right. you know, it's not even it's not even out there clean. Right. And I, I don't even like when artists do that. You know, if you're gonna you know to be more marketable, you need to have you know if your mar if your if your music is just all explicit and you can't have no clean edit. It's only going to be heard in certain certain scenarios. Well, so, let me ask you this. Then, so are there any preference? Just I'm talking about for you. Mm -hmm. Are there any preference or parties that you do when you don't do? I don't. I don't like. I don't. I try not not to do sweet sixteens. I don't care for them because mm -hmm. you don't get the DJ because mm -hmm. they want to hear all the latest uh, stuff. Then TikTok has taken over with the music. Uh, it's and the TikTok thing is is a good and a bad mm -hmm. thing because a lot of it they bring back a lot of older music. That the yeah. kids won't even really own. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the Sweet Sixteen, you don't really get the DJ because they don't they, they don't care nothing about you blending on music. They ain't gonna do no line dances. They on right. their phone the whole time of an event. Uh, they don't dance to the music. And then you know, you I'm I'm almost fifty. They sixteen. You got little girls out there, you know, doing all these. God forbidden dances or whatever. Yeah. I just it don't feel right. You know, yeah. I was doing proms at one time. That's the same thing. It's almost essentially as a sweet sixteen. Yeah. So yeah. if it's twenty five and under, I really don't even like to mess with. You don't pretty much fool with. Yeah, we, we we don't have no connection. Right. You know, right. I can't say certain things on the mic. Somebody may take that and run with it. You know, in this Me Too movement. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think what you just said helped me understand this too. You certain ages help you make that connection. As you play your music for that audience, correct, absolutely. You know what I'm saying. So you feel it, what's going on? They feel what's going on. Absolutely, you make that connection, and it's better for you. And you feel that you have have had a better a better DJ experience at that night or that performance. You absolutely, know? yeah. Them yeah. Sweet Sixteen, man. They Sweet Sixteen is for the birds. Uh, I actually got. A, I, I'm thinking I'm going to put it on my website. I do not do Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> so they call it. Yeah, they still call. Ooh, <laughs> very far in between, but they still yeah. call. Yeah. I mean, because I got I got it on my because that's like one of the. What's your website? Uh, website. Uh, uh www.djonelove the number one l u v e n t dot com. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. Cool. But uh, uh, that's like a thing. Uh, as far as like your your, I guess you would say genres of events. Uh huh. Just for use a choice of words. You know, you know, gonna, gonna say wedding receptions. You're gonna say uh, parties. Sweet sixteen is almost like a that's like the the big thing when you know that that age or whatever. I don't know where it came from, and, right, right. You know, but now it's deemed as a popular event. Yeah. And when I first started doing it, you know, the DJing it was cool, but as I got old, I'm like, that don't make sense for me to be doing those sweet sixteen party. And then the music even made it even be more and more. Like, oh no, nah, this ain't gonna work. I understand how you felt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like I don't need to be here. I'm <laughs> so I'm definitely right. the wrong spot. And, I mean, like, and like now my daughter finna be 21. Uh -huh. You know, so I'm 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 getting more and more far removed. Yeah, you know, you still got guys that do it because you know, yeah. and, and you would think by me being a full time and me operating a business that you know how hey, you need all the money you can get, but all money ain't good money. Right, right, <laughs> right. And you would learn fast in any business like that. Right. You understand, like all money is not good money, mean that. This is not a waste for my time. You right. know what I'm saying? I just pass it on to someone else. Let me ask you the final question. Okay. What would you tell people, the upcoming people that want to be DJs? You know, what what's the pitfall? What to avoid? What not to, you know, do? And, and what you need to do mm -hmm. to be successful right. as a DJ? First of all, if you're on time, you're late. There you go. Uh, you'll be surprised at so many guys that, you know, as, as the market has advanced, you know, you got certain things that you, uh, you know, because your setup time is also a part of your your unloading. Mm -hmm. So the most stuff you have is part of your setup time. So if you get, you know, multiple speakers, facades, TVs, you know, lights, whatever you have, the more stuff you have to unload, that's a part of your, cut, your, your setup time. Yeah. So if it take you they just say 20 minutes to unload, and it take you, say, another 20 minutes to set up. It's almost cutting into an hour. So you need to, you know, you know, streamline what you're doing. Like, I just got through buying a brand new cart. That cart is almost $600. But if the cart is, like, 
probably as long as this whole area, once you let it out, I can almost get everything on one road, depending on what, a, what event I'm doing. Yeah. And then when I get in, all I think I got to do is just set up, you know, and then, if, but if you're there on time, if you get at least an hour to two hours before that event, then you're good. But if you get them 30, 45 minutes, before they the looking event, at you. Yeah. You, and then I don't like, I don't like to set up, uh, why people are there for the event. I want the people to be coming in yeah. to the experience where I'm already set up, depending on the, the occasion, I'm already dressed for it. Right. I don't want to be I don't want to be doing nothing getting ready for the event. I need to be I'm a part of the, the I'm a part of the decor. I'm right. a part of the setup. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you got so many guys, you know, they don't, you know, they don't even think like that. But that's that's part of your business. Again, and that's you, business mindset. Correct. You talk about when you go yeah. read my reviews, my reviews state he was punctual. He was on time. He was dressed appropriate. You know, so that's like, you know, make sure that you're on time. You know, if, if I don't say anything else, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest. Because that'll stand out more than anything. I don't, right. You know, the DJing skills, that's cool. But you got to make sure that you're making yourself marketable and you're on time. There you go. Yeah. There you go. If you need a DJ, he <laughs> said himself, DJ One Love, baby. <laughs> Definitely about being on time. It's just been having that business mindset. Again, there's a phone number. People can reach out and call okay. you. Okay. 901-848-2758. You also can catch me through the week as well. Tuesday nights, I do karaoke at the genre Memphis at 200 Poplar, across the street from 201 Poplar. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, so I'm there on Wednesdays from 6 to 10. On Thursdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'm at the Vineyard. Uh, that's 1599 Everest Presley out in the Whitehaven area. Uh, Wednesday night karaoke, Thursday night soul, uh, Southern Soul and Line Dancing. Uh, then, of course, all my other events. And uh, you can hit me up again at DJ1LoveENT.com. Uh, DJ1Love, you can just Google it. Everything going to pop up, all my social media platforms. And uh, I make sure we take care of business for you. Well, there you go. And DJ1Love in the studio, Spit to the Beat podcast. Thank you again, man, for being Thank you part for of the show. Having me on, man, I really appreciate it, man. I'm gonna I'm keep spitting to the beat. There you go, there you go. <laughs> All right, hold tight as I wrap it up. Yes, sir. My uh. On my uh, sorry, uh, on my fan page because I'm.